So what's otter risk? Um, we talked about it in class, but the general definition is that otter risk, it's the risk that the financial statements are materially misstated um, or are materially incorrect, even though the audit opinion states that the financial reports are free of any material misstatement. So basically what that means is that the auditor determines the audit risk um, before they begin the audit to see if the if they think the financial mis the financial statements will be misstated before they begin the audit. So they're determining whether or not they'll give the correct opinion on whether they're misstated or not. So there are two components that go into determining audit risk. The first is the risk of material misstatement, which is inherent risk and control risk combined. And that just means that those two combined are the risk that the financial statements or the financial reports are materially incorrect before the audit is performed. The second factor is detect risk, and that's the risk that the auditor's procedures do not detect a material misstatement. So that means when the auditor is doing the audit, they wouldn't pick up on a material misstatement in their report. So they determine these factors and give percentages to each of these, and that ultimately overall determines the overall audit risk. So a real life example of this could be credit risk. So credit risk is the risk that a borrower may not repay a loan that the lender and that the lender may lose the principal of the loan or the interest associated with it when they extend credit to a customer. So essentially, it's the potential that a bank um, borrower will fail to meet its obligations in accordance with the agreed upon terms of the loan. So the goal of credit risk um, is to maximize a bank's risk adjusted rate of return by maintaining credit risk exposure within acceptable parameters. So how is credit risk assessed? They're calculated based on the borrower's overall ability to repay the amount of credit that they're extended. Um, usually, um, people who loan borrowers uh, money will look at their credit history, their capacity to repay, um, ca overall capital, the loan's conditions, and the associated collateral. And there can be a level of low or high credit risk determining um, or based on those factors that are evaluated. And today we interviewed McKenna at Umpqua Bank and she's going to tell us a little bit about what they look at when determining credit risk. Okay, um, so at, at Umpqua Bank we, um, you know, when we decide if we are going to lend funds to someone, um, a couple different things go into uh, that decision. Number one is credit. Um, credit's very important. Uh, we like to see, um, you know, no derogatory uh, payments. We like to see um, on-time consistent payments, uh, your experience with credit is a big portion, um, and how long you have had that experience with credit. Um, you know, the things that, that really negatively, negatively affect a credit score would be uh, filing bankruptcy, making um, payments at least 30 days uh, late or 60 days late. Um, if those, any of those are reported, we, we look at that and um, we would then make the decision if you know if we want to extend credit to someone that has you know not paid someone back in the past um, automatic collections we automatically decline those loans um, unless the collections have been paid and our customers can uh, prove that the collections have been paid the other factor that goes into it is debt to income ratio we like to see debt to income ratio below 40 percent um, anything above that we really like to to request customers to pay off certain things mm -hmm. um, we just we don't want to to overextend credit to someone that, that might not be able to pay it back and that 40% level is kind of where we determine that. Um, so those two factors uh, is what we really look at when we're, we're lending. Um, the unsecured side, we're a little more strict, um, obviously because we're, we're giving money unsecured. The secured side of things, if we're taking the home for collateral, um, a car for collateral, we can be a little more lenient on that. Um, but that's, that's really what we use, so perfect. I have a question. Yeah. Um, is there like a strict yes or no? I mean, on, when you consider those factors, are you, I like you said you're a little bit lenient on something, so are you willing to extend more or less credit to the client depending on the factors that you consider, or is there pretty much yes or no? 
Um, so the the pretty much the yes or no. If a if a client has filed bankruptcy, it's going to be more on the no side. Um, if you know if they have limited experience, we would you know try to work with them a little bit. You know maybe they could get a co-signer on the loan. Um, but you know our our best customers are the ones that you know they're they've had credit for a while. They have history of managing high revolving lines. Um, you know things like that. They have a mortgage that they've been paying on for ten years. Um, you know, those are really the clients that, you know, we are, we want to extend, you know, funds to. But at the same time, we also want to help people build their credit up. Um, so we, we evaluate every, um, you know, relationship a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, for a individual who might not have credit, we might ask them, you know, we can put the application through it. We always will take an application, see what it comes back as. Um, and, you know, if it, if it declines, let's, you know, do you have a parent, a grandparent that can, you know, really help you establish the credit? So we like to take, you know, all types of customers um, and, you know, see what we can do. Even the, the customers that have bad credit that, you know, we can't assist, uh, we do have different products that can help them rebuild. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Any other questions? So how does this all tie into audit risk? So to review, auditors evaluate the risk that the financial statements will be materially misstated before the audit, just like lenders evaluate the risk that they will get paid when issuing a loan. In audit, inherit risk, control risk, and detection risk are all considered in evaluating the overall audit risk. In credit, the credit history, capacity to repay, capital, loan conditions, and associated collateral are also all considered when determining credit risk. An acceptable level of risk is determined for both. Wherever that threshold is, an auditor may choose to do more or less testing, and the creditor may choose to loan less or more money, or choose to work with the client based on their needs. And, um, the more effective and extensive the audit work, the lower the level of risk. To compare that to credit, the extra steps a borrower takes to have a high credit score, the lower his credit risk will be. So overall, each have multiple factors that contribute to assessing the risk and decision, is to assessing the overall risk. Decision, decisions are made on how to proceed based on the level of assessed risk. So in conclusion, auto risk can be kind of compared to credit risk as a real life example.